I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be, and it's my first time at CRM, so I really enjoyed uh, I will speak about gamma functions, monodromy, and upper reconstance. There will be four parts in the talk, so the first three will be about gamma functions, monodromy, and upper reconstance, and then there will be part four in which I will present some of our results and relate these subjects. Uh, and uh, this is work in progress with uh, Spencer Bloch and Francis Brown. So for this talk, uh, L will be a differential operator, a linear differential operator on uh, P1 without a finite set of points. Uh, I will remove zero and infinity uh, also, so it will be C star minus a finite set, which I will denote by U. And uh, uh, it's of order n, and coefficients are rational functions on P1. And we attach to it entire functions given by uh, functions of S given by an integral over a closed path sigma of t to the s, phi of t dt over t, where this phi is a uh, solution to L, and uh, sigma is a closed oriented path. in U. Uh, so phi is defined in some neighborhood of U. And uh, for this integral to be well defined, we assume more things. So we assume that sigma is contractible in C star. That makes the monodromy of T to the S trivial along sigma. And then we also assume that phi has trivial monodromy along sigma. I will denote the monodromy, uh, like sigma is the path, I will denote by this bracket the monodromy operator, the action of this path on functions. So sigma phi is phi. Then the integral is well defined and it gives us an entire function of S. And it depends on this pair, the path and the solutions, the solution. Um, so this is what we will call gamma functions. You know that the classical gamma function is an integral between two singularities. And here we assume the path to be closed. So certainly we could extend this notion, but for the purpose of this talk, we, we just stick to this simple situation. And uh, we say that a gamma function is motivic when L is a geometric differential operator. when L is of Picard-Fuchs type. And uh, phi here is a period function. Uh, by this I mean that there is a family of algebraic varieties over this set U. Uh, this is defined over a field K, some subfield of complex numbers. And uh, phi of T, where T is a point on the base here, is given by an integral of some Dirham form or a Betty cycle, sorry. Uh, and this Dirham form and Betty cycle are on the fiber xt over the point t. 
Let me give you an example. So take L to be 1 minus T D over DT minus 1 half. This is of order 1, so there is one solution up to scaling. This is 1 over the square root of 1 minus t. And uh, take the following loop sigma, which winds around 0 and 1. But our goal is to make it contractible in C star. So I can just take something very simple. I will take a loop which uh, goes like that. So you see that it does not wind around zero because we uh, go in two different directions when we pass around zero. And uh, uh, here it's the same direction, but it's not important. So this will be the loop sigma and the respective gamma function is the integral over sigma of t to the s square root of 1 minus t dt over t, and in this case it can be computed easily, so we start at some point near 0, go to 1, so we integrate from 0 to 1, more or less, then when we turn, to, turn around 1, the solution changes sign, so we do minus, but, and now go back from 1 to 0, now our solution, when we go around 0, uh, multiplies by e to the minus 2 pi i s and we go from 0 to 1 again and then we change sign again so it will be plus e to the minus 2 pi i s integral from 1 to 0 and that results into 2 times 1 minus minus 2 pi i s Mm. times an integral, a beta integral, t to the s square root of minus t between 0 and 1. So we can write that this is a gamma product, where gamma is the classical gamma function. It's gamma of s, gamma of 1 half, gamma of s plus 1 half, and uh, we see that this particular combination of classical gamma functions is entire and motivic, according to our definition. So one can give a more general definition of gamma functions, which will be important for us. So more generally, we take, uh, we look at the local system of solutions to L. This is a local system on U, local system of K vector spaces. So if you uh, don't care about geometric differential operators, you can think that we are over the field of complex numbers. But here, in the geometric case, we can only consider solutions which come from real Betty cycles, and then there will be a rational structure in the space of solutions. There will be a rational subspace, I mean a Q-vector space, which corresponds to actual integration over uh, topological cycles. Uh, so we look at this local system and we consider the homology group with coefficients in this local system. But now I want to tensor it with another local system of rank 1, which I will symbolically denote by t to the s. 
But this T2DS is another local systems system, which is the system of solutions to T D over dt minus s, and s is a parameter. So this is a homology with coefficients in local system. And um, this can be seen as group homology. For this, we pick a point p in u and uh, write it as the homology of the group of loops pi 1 u loops based at p with coefficients in the representation of this group given by the stock of this local system at p, which means just solutions around this point p. Uh, I will denote it like this. Okay, and then, as a, uh, so I have to put the stock of this rank one local system here, but it's, it's rank one and uh, the monodromy, the action of this group here on t to the s results into multiplication by e to the 2 pi i s to some integer power. So as a representation, I can write it like this. 2 pi i s. And say that this group acts here by the monodromy of, of t to the s. So a class in this homology group can be represented by the following combination. Uh, it's a finite sum of uh, the following triples. Sigma m, uh, m is the index of summation, sigma m is a path based at p times a solution near p, phi m times um, e to the 2 pi i m s, and m are integers. And there could be different presentations for the same cycle. They differ by certain things which vanish in this homology group. So some such combinations are zero in the homology group. And then we attach to this the gamma function, which is just the sum of the integrals you have seen. The point here is that this is well defined on homology classes. So whatever vanishes in the homology groups gives you zero, and uh, you need the condition that some uh, boundary operator on this vanishes in order for this sum to be well defined. So I have to say this is a bit technical. And in actual examples, I can always reduce gamma functions to the sums over closed loops and invariant solutions as above. But it's an important point of view that gamma functions, that they are defined on homology. Uh, with this extension, we can prove the following statement. Uh, so the gamma functions, or this homology group is a module of finite rank, finitely generated module, over k e to the plus minus 2 pi i s. So I have to explain something here. So when we interpret things as uh, group homology of the homotopy group acting on some representation, uh, so this representation is a module over this algebra of Laurent polynomials. And e to the, uh, which just means that every such expression can be multiplied by a power of e to the 2 pi i s. So you can, you can shift it. And physically, this corresponds to the choice of branch of t to the s at the base point p. You can just shift the branch of t to the s. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so there is the action of the homotopy group here. But on the other hand, you can always shift the branch of t to the s. So there are two actions, and they commute. That's why after you are taking homology, the structure of being a k to the e to the 2 pi i s module is preserved. 
And gamma functions, uh, we have this gamma is a linear functional on this group H1. So I can say the same about gamma functions. So to summarize, we can get uh, finitely many gamma functions uh, from a differential operator up to multiplication by Laurent polynomials in e to the 2 pi i s. That's what we have here. Uh, I have to mention that this fact of being finitely generated can be used for interpolation of recurrences. This is not a topic of my talk, but since the conference is about difference equations, I will mention that I also have some difference equations here. So, uh, application. Interpolation. of recurrences. Um, so if we write our differential operator as some polynomial in D, D will be T, D over DT. I will often use this in my talk. Uh, plus T, some other polynomial in D, plus T to the R, P to the R of D. These are some polynomials. I can do it after multiplying L by a rational function. Then looking for a power series solution to this differential operator. And I want a power series A and T to the N to be annihilated by L. It's the same as solving the following recurrence. Uh, that Pj of N minus J A n minus j is zero. And then uh, one can check that the following function, gamma psi or any homology class psi of minus s satisfies this continuously. So if you match a function which gives the same values as, you, as the sequence here at integers, then you have interpolated it by a gamma function. But we have a strong analytic restriction here. We only allow to, to approximate by Mellin transforms of solutions of the differential operator. And that gives us a module of finite rank. So you can ask what is the value of your recurrence at one half, for example. And then you will get something, uh, uh, this restriction gives you a finitely, uh, so, so we will have something finitely generated over k, which could have been uh, the field of rational numbers. There, there will be an algebraic field, uh, a, a number field, in which the values at one half lie uh, according to this restriction. All right. Uh, so uh, now, after introducing you to gamma functions, I will uh, speak a bit about monotromy. Just remind you some classical definitions. Uh, first, on local monotromy. Excuse me. What does this sum mean when s is not an integer? Uh, the sum is j from 0 to r. Oh. The same thing. Just uh, you allow the index to be a real number or complex number. <coughs> so let's look at the local monodromy of our differential operator near a singular point. Uh, assume for the moment that this point is t equals zero. Uh, so after multiplying by uh, our differential operator by some rational function on the left, uh, we can assume that uh, we write it as d to the n plus some rational function d to the n minus 1 and so on. So we just collect the powers of the derivative here. And uh, as before, d is this. So uh, it's known that t... Oh. Uh, 
So T is a regular singularity. Yeah, whenever all Pi are holomorphic at zero. And local exponents at zero are defined uh, as the numbers rho one, rho n, which solve uh, the following algebraic equation, where just substitute rho instead of d here and evaluate the functions at zero. So, sorry, I need should start with Q1, right? So we get n complex numbers with multiplicities. They are called the exponents. And then uh, let sigma zero be a little loop around our singularity. And we look at the, uh, and the action of this loop on the space of solutions at some point P nearby. And uh, these local exponents mean that there are Jordan blocks of this linear operation, which look like this. Row on the diagonal, uh, one above. So we basically look at the Jordan decomposition of the logarithm of the monodromy. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, so this is one Jordan block, in general there are many, and in each Jordan block, in each sub Jordan subspace for the local monodromy, we can choose the basis in which the monodromy is represented precisely the, by this matrix, and this is called the Frobenius basis. So to remind you quickly what, what it is, uh, so the first function in the basis in this Jordan block is given by t to the row times the power series which starts with one. I will, uh, so power series, I will call it the analytic part and denote it by phi zero analytic. Uh, phi one, the next function in the basis is given by uh, phi zero analytic, uh, phi zero times log t plus another power series, another analytic part, and everything multiplied by t to the row. So if the block is big and there is phi q, then it will be uh, phi zero analytic log t squared over two factorial plus phi one analytic mm -hmm log t plus another power series, and so on. Uh, so here I have to uh, point out that doing the Frobenius basis, if we started with uh, a geometric uh, differential operator, then we could stick to uh, some uh, local system over rational numbers, for example, or over a number field. But when you are computing this Frobenius basis, you will leave this space in general. These are not the rational solutions. They are not integrals over some topological cycles. So for this, I will write that they belong to the solution space tensored with complex numbers, and this is essential. So we leave the rational structure here. And uh, when L is geometric, uh, then all singularities are regular, like here. All local exponents are rational, or in other words, monodromy matrices are quasi-unipotent. They have roots of unity at their eigenvalues. So, uh, local monodromies
And interestingly, this Frobenius basis spans the Betti structure of the limiting mixed Hodge structure. So it has some geometric meaning. This is basically in Stian Brink's paper on limiting mixed Hodge structure. I mean, it's in the definition, but that has to be read uh, cleverly to understand this. So I just want to, to accept in this talk that this Frobenius basis has some geometric meaning, and therefore we can uh, use it as a machine to produce interesting numbers when we started from a geometric differential operator. Uh, so the idea would be to zoom out and to look at two singularities, not just one. Uh, so suppose we have two singularities at zero and C. Uh, choose some path in U between them. Choose, compute the Frobenius basis at one singularity. Compute the Frobenius basis in the other singularity. Uh, bring one basis to uh, the other singularity along this path, so you have two bases in one space, so you can express one through the other one. Uh, this is called the connection matrix between the two singularities. So you see that in some sense it connects two mixed Hodge structures, and it could be that the entries are interesting numbers, as we will see in examples in this talk. So for this talk, I will do some restrictions on the type of singularity, some restrictions on the monodromy matrices under which we will produce our numbers, but the story could go in more general situations, of course. Um, so I will introduce a Perry constants. Uh, assume, I will call it assumption see that the image of the local monodromy at the singular point C minus the identity, so the variation of the monodromy, uh, is one-dimensional. And uh, pick a solution delta such that So I work at some point P in between the two singularities, doesn't matter which one. So pick a solution such that uh, uh, image of local monodromy is spanned by delta. Uh, in the geometric situation, we can construct such delta I mean, uh, such a situation as in this assumption ar arises when you have a vanishing cycle in the family, and this singularity is then call, uh, is called a conifold point. So example when this assumption holds would be, so we have a family, and uh, there is a, at point C, there is a vanishing cycle. On this picture, it would be like we have it, the, uh, the topological cycle we consider is the difference of two points on two different branches, and it degenerates this point, and this is called the vanishing cycle. So it's called conifold point. And there is a picard lefschetz theorem which tells us how the local monodromy behaves around the, uh, the conifold point here, and uh, this picard lefschetz Theorem tells us that sigma c minus one applied to uh, a solution, or in this case, the topological cycle varied in the family because you fix the differential form and vary the topological cycles. This is the cup product of epsilon with delta times delta, cup product with the vanishing cycle. Here. Um, okay. But it can be applied to non-geometric differential operate, operators, what I'm going to say next, just under this assumption C, that 
Now, the variation of monodromy has one dimensional image. So under this condition, we can define So let ii be the Frobenius basis at the other singularity we picked. Um, so define the numbers kappa zero kappa n minus one. Uh, there are n numbers where n is the order of our differential operator by uh, the following formula. So you just uh, apply the variation of the monodromy at, the, at this conifold point, or in general at the point which satisfies the assumption, I will call it the conifold point in this lecture, to the Frobenius basis and get the numbers kappa i here. So basically this is a situation of the kind I said above. This, this way we see a part of the connection matrix, say one row in the connection matrix. Uh, and uh, these numbers will tell you how phi i will change when you go around the conifold point and come back. They will, a, a multiple of the of this uh, fixed solution will add to them. And uh, you see in this definition that they are defined up to rescaling. We can multiply them all by the same number if we, risk, uh, if we change this delta. So this vector is defined up to multiplying by a constant. And they are not all zero because uh, this is a basis in the space of solutions. Uh, so there, there must be at least one non-zero number here. Let's give an example. So my example will be the differential operator of order three. Very particular one, which is related to Apery's proof of irrationality of zeta of three. So if you write it in terms of the uh, derivatives d over dt, not this differential d, it will be like this, the leading term <coughs> plus derivatives of the smaller order. So you see that it has singularities at zero, infinity, and the two roots of this quadratic equation. Uh, so it has four singularities. T equals zero is maximally unipotent. The monodromy is maximally unipotent, uh, meaning that it has one Jordan block. And uh, the eigenvalue is one. Local exponents are integral and actually zero. So T equals zero is maximally unipotent. So uh, sigma zero can be written and uh, now we will look at the singularity at uh, one of the roots of this quadratic equation and this appears to be the conifold point uh, because this is a geometric differential operator. So, uh, uh, C, which is 17 minus 17 square minus one, 
uh, this is the closest singularity to zero, is conifold. And the monodromy looks like this. I don't remember the local exponents exactly. So there is one. The vanishing cycle is the eigenvector, which with this eigenvalue minus one, and the other two are one and one. Uh, so there is the actual family here. It's a family of K3 surfaces. which can be given explicitly by an equation of this sort. Uh, where f is a Loran polynomial in three variables. I will not write it down, you can find it in the literature, but uh, this is a toric equation, so it's a toric hypersurface and then it can be compactified to a K3 surface. But uh, to see how L is related to this, the easiest way would be to, to say that phi zero, the solution, the first solution in the Frobenius basis at zero actually, can be written as follows. The triple integral of one over the equation over the torus where all coordinates are one. Uh, 1 over 2 pi i cubed. So, uh, and then what you get as a power series expansion uh, is the sequence of constant terms of powers of the Soran polynomials in which people who have seen this can recognize the upper sequence. Okay, uh, so for this differential operator, we can apply the definition of upper constants, and what we get is uh, kappa zero, I will normalize it to one. It's non zero, so I'm allowed to choose a multiple of my vanishing cycle and normalize it to one. Kappa one appears to be zero, and kappa two is minus pi squared over three. So now I'm going to do uh, uh, to do something to get more upper constants. I will uh, extend my local system by just multiplying the differential operator by another differential operator on the left. So I will do it in this example. Uh, please try to follow me. Look at DL. Uh, so a differential operator of order 4. L was of order 3. Uh, so it will start d to the 4 plus something. Uh, so we look at this differential operator and, and analyze its singularities. And apparently t equals 0 is again maximally unipotent. So I will abbreviate it as MAM, maximally unipotent monodromy at t equals 0. And uh, C satisfies our assumption C again. So both conditions are preserved. Moreover, by construction, the solutions of L are the solutions of DL, but there is one more solution. So at, at t equals zero, we had the Frobenius basis, and now we have got the next element in the Frobenius basis. We can just add it up. So we have got phi three, the next element in the Frobenius basis, which solves this equi non homogeneous equation. So one is killed by D, then it's a solution to DL. And since we have this conifold condition, we can compute the next upper constant. And apparently it's uh, 17 over 6 zeta of 3. This was computed in a recent paper of Goloshev and Zagier. And uh, uh, technically, they use that C is the closest singularity. Uh, so the fact that some solution extends through C or is invariant under the local monodromy near C means that uh, they use this analytic parts of the Frobenius basis, the power series, and they show, uh, they find the constant 
such that a linear combination of them has a larger radius of convergence. By looking at the limits of ratios of, uh, of coefficients of two power series, more or less like that. So you have solution phi i, solution phi zero, and you compare, uh, compare the two sequences of coefficients. You look at the ratio and its limit. Uh, so they computed this one, and they observed that actually one can continue this game, you can multiply by d again and again and get infinitely many uh, uh, numbers, infinitely many upper numbers. So I will write it as so Golishev and Zagier observed that one can continue. And uh, technically, we have to prove that those conditions are preserved, and it's not hard. Everyone can do it. So if t equals zero is a point of maximal unipotent monodromy for L, then it's, the condition is preserved for the operators d minus rho to the ML, where rho is the local exponent at zero. So it, it, it will be preserved and you will just get more and more elements in the Frobenius basis. What is interesting that uh, the assumption C for L is also preserved for this differential operator. So indeed we can continue and not only in this example but in general. But it's difficult to compute upper reconstants. So Golishev and Zagier did it theoretically for kappa of three and experimentally for the next ones. And I have to show you their results. Let me write them here. They would call them higher upper reconstants. So kappa three you have seen. Kappa four is pi to the four over 45. Kappa of five is seven over three zeta of five minus 17 over three zeta of three times zeta of two and so on. So they are rational linear combinations of zeta values and if we look at kappa i, the sum of weights is i, like here, five and three plus two and that goes up to number 10 but number 11 involves a multiple zeta value. And then uh, physicists David Broadhurst computed more and more of them experimentally and that, pre uh, that is preserved. It seems they are all combinations of multiple zeta values. So kappa 11 involves zeta of three, five, three. So our project with Spencer and Francis was to explain this kind of miracle, why this happens. Because if you started with a geometric differential operator L, these differential operators don't have to be geometric. You leave the domain of geometry. So why you are still getting some interesting numbers, that is not clear at all. And uh, in the remaining part of this talk, I will, will present our explanation to this. So uh, we have two singularities, zero and c. We join them by some path, and uh, I mean, like before in this story, and look at some small neighborhood of this path. Let me call this set u tilde. It's a subset of u, an analytic subset. Uh, so theorem under assumption C, uh, 
the module of gamma functions arising from homology classes uh, computed only on U tilde. So we restrict to gamma functions basically where you integrate along some loops in this domain. You are not allowed to take uh, something outside of it. Uh, this module of gamma functions is a module over this Laurent polynomial algebra of rank at most one. Uh, and it's a free module. So there is one, uh, at most one generator. There is either one almost canonical gamma function here up to multiplication by a multiple of e to the 2 pi i s or nothing, or they are all zero. For example, if uh, zero was a regular point, then they will just all vanish. Uh, but I will continue. If zero is a point of maximal unipotent monodromy, then the rank is actually one, and the generator is the following. So then the generator of this module satisfies. So we computed this canonical gamma function in this case. Uh, gamma psi of s times 2 pi i s e to the 2 pi i s minus 1 to the power n, which is the order of our differential operator. This is the generating function of the upper constants. Uh, this formula looks very nice, but it's only when kappa of 0 is non zero. In general, you can have that kappa function starts in degree m, but it must be up to uh, up to n minus one. At least one of the first n kappa numbers is not zero, and in this case, the formula will be this to the power n minus m. is kappa of s divided by s to the m. Okay, uh, so the consequence of this statement, basically we proved that this kappa function is the gamma function. Uh, it implies that then l is geometric, then all kappa i are periods, and moreover, they are some explicit iterated integrals. Uh, the, why I see that, let me show it for the block, for, for the simple gamma function like this. Uh, where we have one solution at, as at the beginning of this lecture, and in general, it's, it's similar. So uh, let's look at Taylor coefficients of this. Let's look at the uh, nth derivative at zero. This is an integral of log t to the n phi of t dt over t, and then this reduces to a linear combination of iterated integrals in the same sense of chain. You do dt over t uh, n times. But to be honest, there, there will be uh, n, n minus 1, and so on, and there will be rational linear combinations. And this is chain's iterated integral. Which means that it's actually an integral over a simplex. So you have to parameterize this sigma uh, by uh, 
an interval between 0 and 1 and do the simplex. So let me write it quickly what it means. So you have a parametrization and uh, the differential forms just one forms. Then the k-fold integral over sigma of, of these forms is defined as an integral of their pullbacks over a simplex. That's it. Uh, so let me uh, give you the expression for higher upper constants in a simple case. Uh, so remember the first example in this lecture where we computed the gamma function. Uh, so we just have to do its Taylor expansion and that's easy. So in that example the differential operator was I will multiply it by t now. Which is d minus t d plus one half. And uh, if we apply our construction to that case, uh, the kappa function is this. Where this is the classical gamma function. So we apply uh, various formulas for the classical gamma function to transform it to this. And now the Taylor expansion of the classical gamma function f at 1 uh, is known to contain some zeta values. So this is the logarithmic expansion will look like this. Okay, so we computed infinitely many upper constants in this case, and they are all uh, exactly as before, uh, rational combinations of zeta values and log 2 of proper weight. This should be considered as something of weight 1 here. And uh, uh, speaking of the upper example, which is more complicated, I cannot prove the experimental formulas of Golishev and Lager. But from our construction, it follows immediately that kappa n's are iterated integrals of certain Eisenstein series on gamma naught 6, more or less. And uh, then I believe there should be a way to transform them into multiple zeta values, but that's, that's work in progress. Thank you very much.